Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to episode 5 and our continued adventures with Crusader Kings 3 as we try to get the Blood Eagle achievement with one of the sons or descendants of the sons of Ragnar Lothbrok. Now to get this achievement you have to conquer the entire Empire of Britannia which is sitting beside my head here. In our first four episodes we took Jarl Bjorn who is off to the left side of the screen and he completely moved his entire kingdom of in Scandinavia over to England and formed the Jarldom here of Mercia, which we can see behind our head. The next step for Jarl Bjorn is trying to form the Kingdom of England, but we are six counties short of the political clout we need to do so. So in this episode, that's our goal. Can we get six more counties, form the Kingdom of England, as we look at the map behind us here, um, and if we click on the kingdom map for England here, the kingdom titles by using this control in the bottom right of the screen, we can see the land we control and we need six more counties in this other red area in order to be able to form England. Now, the problem we're facing is Wessex to the south of us, which is rather strong. Um, we've got a treaty, a peace treaty with them because we just recently attacked them. So we can't attack them right away. Likewise, East Anglia, which is ripe for the picking to our east, we also can't attack them very easily as well because we've got a peace treaty there. We can, however, pick off this one county, Amwithig here, on the eastern side here of this Prince Rodri's realm. So I think we're gonna try to attack here and pick this off. Now to the north, we've also got a lot of potential ground that we could take, but we've got a couple things going on up here. One, our brother lies to our north, and two, we've got a plague to our north, which is actually in our kingdom right now. The cold humor flu, which is causing potential problems. We don't want to get this and we don't want to die. So as usual, we've got lots of problems to try to overcome. Our brother is our ally to our north. Uh, so I think, unfortunately, the only way we're going to get these counties quickly is if somehow we were to try to pick off some of these counties in this kingdom of Jorvik to our north. I don't want to attack our brother, one, because he's stronger than us, and two, because he's our ally. But I was poking around between episodes, and if we hover over uh, Jarl Hafdan here, who is our brother, one of our two remaining living brothers out of four, we hover over his character here. We can see that he's maimed. He's also wounded. He's also a drunkard. And if we hover over here by the heart, right beside his 49 years of age, we can see his health is dying. Jarl Hafdan is at death's doorstep. He's got an aggravated wound, plus the other things, drunken, wounded, and maimed. So he might not be, and he doesn't look good either. I mean, if we look at him there, he's, yeah, he's having a rough day. So he might die. And if he dies, his kingdom very well could be split up over his three living sons, which might give us some counties that would be ripe for the picking off. I was looking at his eldest son here, Elf Guth Guthfrith, who is a prowess of 28. I, we do not want to mess with this guy on a battlefield. Oh my gosh, this, this guy uh, is a Viking of Vikings here. Um, he is, oh, he's a legitimized bastard too, but he's a berserker. Yeah, this is, he's bad news on the battlefield. We want to try to avoid combat with him. But anyway, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do here, we do have, I think, the military clout to try to take this county away from uh, Prince Rodri, and we'll call our brothers in to, to help us out a little bit here. The, the backdrop that we're playing with as well, too, not to belabor the point of starting up the action here, is if we look at the county control map by clicking the plus sign down in the bottom right, and then clicking county control to see how we're doing with control over the lands we own. Um, red, as you might imagine, is, uh, is bad here. And if we look down here, we can see in Cornwall, we've only got a control of 24 up here in... Jurabi, we've only got a control of five. And then down here in, Her in Herefordshire, we only have a control of six. Some of these other places are yellow. I mean, these are places we've taken over. There was a rebellion up in here. Cheshire is only at a 33. So we want to be a little bit careful and kind of control, make sure we don't suffer kind of rebellions that get out of control in the lands that we hold. So this might be one of those times in Crusader Kings 3 where going slow is going fast, right? You kind of just got to let the, the, the cake bake a little bit. Got to let maybe our brother die, maybe pick off this county, let these truces run up, and then be a little bit judicious in how we move forward. It might also make sense to see if we can snip away some of these Irish weaker counties over here, because we can see now uh, the Jarldom of Munster has gotten big, and we don't want this to become a kingdom that becomes a problem for us later. So we might just wander over and do a couple of adventures in Ireland too. 
But um, with that being said, let's jump right in here and we're going to declare war against Prince Rodri, trying to conquer this country here of Amwithig. And we should be able to call our ally, allies in. He does have some allies as well, but we still should outnumber them uh, four to one. We're going to declare that war. We have declared war on Prince Rodri. We're going to raise all our armies, but I want to raise them right up near the border first. So let's click on our rally point. We're going to right click on that. Let's put it right down here. There we go. Uh, Herefordshire is where we will raise all our armies. We're going to do that. And we're going to call our brother to help us out here. That's good. Let's go up to our little command button. That's the easiest place to do that. Let's call Jarl Hafdan. He's not nearly excited to help us out. His only his acceptance is at 66, but that should be a yes. Let's let time roll forward here and get off on our war horse. Oh, we've gained a level of fame. Our glory is widely known and our brother is helping us out. Hopefully he doesn't die mid-war here. All right, let's get going. We're gonna go right for their capital over here. See if we can siege that. I don't see their armies here. Enemy ally joined. Yeah, we knew that was going to happen. We should still be okay here. Oh, there's our enemies to the north. Hopefully our allies can come down. They are sieging Cheshire. Take them on, brother. Only sending 1,600 troops. I don't know why so few troops are coming down here. He's coming down to help us instead of going to wipe them out on the siege, but that's okay, I guess. Oh, yep, they've given up their siege. Seven months left of a siege down here in this fort down here. Where are we, by the way? Aberystwyth. All right, we'll let this uh, settle up. We'll be back as this war kind of uh, progresses here. Things are kind of going wild now with troops all over the place. I've got more allies coming in. My brother is really confused on the battlefield. It's probably his delirium from all his wounds and stuff like that. <gasps> oh no, this is not good. Hafdan has died. I wonder if that means we lose our alliance. We have an option here to, to give a, a kind of preparations for the funeral here. We're not going to go that big. I mean, 55, well, he doesn't need like a big ship here. It looks like we've stayed allied here with everybody, which is very good. They are sieging our capital, but here comes our allies down to help kick some butt here. Come on, guys. I definitely want to see what their country looks like, too, because that might provide some opportunities. Well, they are just running all over the place and chasing each other down and accomplishing nothing. We are over here progressing in our siege. It's looking pretty good. Looks like they're going to catch up to them pretty soon, too. They're coming over to try to take us out. The siege of Ceredigion is completed. Let's come over now and see if we can wipe them out in battle here. Let's go straight east and hopefully our allies will join us. It's time to meet them in the field of war and end this battle here before they siege our capital successfully. They are going to try to run, but we'll try to chase them down here. Come on, allies. Help us out. There we go. Big battle. 6,000 troops to 2,000 troops. It's looking pretty good. This should be a good win for us here. Excellent. 75% wiping them out in the field of battle. Heavy casualties. We do need to do a little bit more sieging. Let's go grab another county over here. Maybe a small one should do. And hopefully that will get the, one, get the contested county here. Hopefully that will swing things in our favor and perhaps be enough to pick up this victory for us. I do want to go up and check out our kingdom, how the brother, our brother's kingdom has been split up too. So as the battle here with our enemies to the west finishes up, the plague is spreading here and we are going into isolation. This gains us stress though because we are brave. And we're losing some legitimacy, but we're going to get secluded for five years here to see if it helps. This It's getting pretty dire. We can see this big red blob here. And if we kick on, click on the plague, the cold humor flu is, is heading our way. We do not want this. As soon as we get this siege point, though, we should, I think, win the war. They are trying to retake their capital. But I'm hopeful that this will finish them off and we're going to get it first. So I think this will fin finish, win the war for us here. Yes, Siege 1, it gets us to 100%. Let's end this war before things go sideways for us. We will enforce our demands, disband our armies by clicking on disband all, and we have gained another county. Excellent, Mercier has expanded. And this now, if we look, click on the, the Kingdom of England here, 
click on it to see what we need. Oh, look at this. Now, I, I confess at the end of the last episode, I wasn't quite sure how this worked. What, why do the requirements for the kingdom keep changing? Because before it said we needed 21 out of 16, 50%. And now it says we only need 35%, which is 15. We own 16. So we have enough and we can create the kingdom of England. So I'm not sure why the counties change. Maybe it depends on how many people own different counties in the land, for example. For, for example, if we look up here to the north where our brother was, we can see that Jorvik has to a certain degree become split up. This, his uh, oldest son here, Guthfrith, has taken over the vast majority of the lands, but then his brother, he's got nothing. Does he have... He's got the Jarldom of... Where is he? What does he own? Oh, he's got this Jarldom over here. He, gets, he, get, <laughs> he got sent over to Russia to be in charge. What happened to him? That's a story. <laughs> What's he doing over there? Come back. Why did you get sent over there? And then he's got another brother who owns this other land. We could potentially pick this off. But is he allied to his brother? He's allied to us. No, he's allied to his brother. Yeah. Okay, this is such a political hotbed, but but all of that aside, the requirements to form the Kingdom of England have shifted again, and we have enough to do so. So maybe it just has to do with how many rulers there are and how much they own. I have no idea why they keep shifting like that. I actually searched for an answer in between episodes here, but I couldn't find anything. But no complaints here. We now, if we look at this, we have 35% of the Dior counties, we, which is 15. We own 16. We have 300 gold. It will give us 400 on prestige and 50 legitimacy. And if we hover over create the title, we got the Kingdom of England, which is going to help us a lot in being able to perhaps vassalize or absorb other lands and, and, and elements. So let's go ahead and become the King of England. I think this is the right move. We're going to create the title. Create. Yes. Now, what happens when you become a king as well is you get a court. And we'll be able to take a look at that shortly. So we get kind of our own little court that we can entertain guests. If you haven't printed it, and our rank up top says you are now a mighty king. It's a big day. Another step forward in the sons of Ragnar Lothbrok becoming a, a, a king of an empire. We've got our first kingdom. As a king, we have new duties and responsibilities. This just spells it out a little bit. Um, let's go in now and let them see their new king. This is an option as soon as you form it. We are going to go right to our um, throne room here. And you can see that it's very basic, right? Because we really haven't had a lot of time to build it up. It's just a place. But the goal will be to make this into a magnificent, splendiferous courtroom. And we do have some court artifacts here. If we click on court artifacts in the top left, and this is something that I meant to explain in the last episode that I didn't, but there are artifacts are basically items that provide benefits in the game. And there's two types of them. In general, you can carve them up into two types. There's individual artifacts that you wear, and then there's artifacts that you put in your throne room. And right now we're looking at these plus signs. And if we hover over these, there's a large wall ornament and a large wall ornament then down here. If we had anything, we could put things on the pedestals. And basically you can adorn your throne room with all these artifacts that provide a lot of different benefits to you and your kingdom. Now, right now we've only got one here, which is if we look at all court artifacts, we've got the Munso House Banner. Um, and if we hover over that, it gives us plus 10% dread gain, levy reinforcement rate of plus 10%, which helps our reinforcements for our troops and then a court grandeur bonus of plus two. These things also wear down over time, so you kind of kind of maintain them and they cost gold to maintain. You can break them apart and you can have people create new ones. So this is a whole mini game within the game really is this um, strengthening and building up your artifacts to help strengthen your realm. But the first thing we want to do then is we're going to click on this and put it up on right over our head here. Yeah, there we go. Whoops, we got to add it. Sorry. Oh man, got it back. We'll put it right there. Okay. Got it in place. So our banner is now right behind our throne room, the Munso House banner, and our throne room has taken its first step towards greater elegance. So very cool. We've got our throne room. We are now the king of Ingdom of England. If we look at our lands here, we have taken a little step forward. Now, the 
the problem here we still have is that we've got a plague in the middle of our lands. If we click here, this is not good. Let's get rid of all of these here. Uh, we've still got a plague going on here, and we have elements of England that are just as strong as we are. Wessex here is pretty strong. They've got 2,800 troops. We've only got 2,600 troops. We've got to get better control of our lands. Jorvik up here is stronger than us militarily, 3,700 troops, but they are still, uh, they are not, yeah, they are all allied to us now. Okay, so we need to do something about that, right? Because we've lost our alliance with our brother there. Okay, so we got problems to fix because the last thing we want is a battle with our brother. So I'm going to kind of sort through some of these pieces and think about some steps forward. So just cleaning up a few odds and ends here. One of the things that I know is we kind of lost our grandson. If we click on our son here under our children on the left hand side, and we click on our grandson, he's like wandering around the countryside somewhere doing just stuff. He's unlanded. He's way over here in some other land. But we're, so we're going to right click on him and we're going to invite him to the court and um, he will accept. We could use a hook to do so, but he's going to accept it. So we're going to get him back into court and give him a job because I think eventually he's 18. We should try to get him married too so that he starts producing kids and stuff like that. He's just a pilgrim right now. Um, he's off doing his own thing. So we, we got to get him back here. So come on, Bjorn, Eric, Eric's, uh, what is it? Eriksson, need to get you back. Um, also, now I was looking here at our nephew, Right? So this is our brother's kid who has got the vast control of Jorvik here and has a very strong military strength. If we right click on him, because he's in English lands now, we could offer vassalage to them to him, but he won't accept it with a minus 44, right? And so we have to get this into the positive, but that's not a huge gain that we need to make, especially if we were to change to low feudal obligations. That's only 14. I would rather have him part of our realm. I mean, he's a problem though, right? This guy's, no matter what we do, he's a problem. He's vengeful, he's ambitious, and he's brave. This guy's a, he's gonna be a thorn in our side, but I would rather at least for the moment have him be part of our realm than trying to wipe our realm out. So if we come up here and right click on him, could we like give him a gift? We can't send a gift. We don't have 206 gold. Wow, he wants a big gift. But we can sway him here, 71% chance to sway him and would increase his public opinion by 25. And if we could do this successfully, that might make him more amenable to being our vassal. It would increase our kingdom. And then we just have to control him as a vassal, which I think is gonna be much, much more likely to work than have him coming down, pouring down with his Vikings and wiping us off the face of the earth. So let's start that scheme and we'll hopefully this will go well and we can get him to be on our side here. I wonder if there's any marriages we could arrange. We could arrange a marriage for our grandson maybe. And does he have, he's got a 40 year old spouse. That's a little grim if we ever want to have kids or a two year old daughter. He will accept it though. Dear, that, that's a long wait for our grandson to have kids though. Um, yeah, I don't, I, as, as tempting as that is, because that would cement an alliance. Um, I'll play around with this and see if there's any other options we have. Oh, look at that. If I just, uh, so <laughs> this is even easier. Um, if we come up here and we just negotiate an alliance, he will accept it. So let's just straight up do that. I didn't even realize that that would be a direct option. So always good to poke around and see what options you've got. I couldn't really figure out any good marriages we could arrange or wards or anything like that, but let's see how that goes. So if we can propose that alliance and then maybe swing his favor, we can get him to be a vassal at some point here. Now these other ones to the east here, East Anglia and then Wessex, they want no part of it because we're completely different faiths. So yes, he is an ally. We've got him on our side as an ally, which is excellent. Now I wonder, will that, his, his didn't change his opinion of us. Even though we're allies, he's like, no, nah, dude, I still really don't like you. I mean, he doesn't hate us. It's minus 18, right? But he's, we're not his favorite person. Is he going to take the vassalage now? It's minus 23, but low feudal obligations. <gasps> he would take it. Oh, look at that. 
he would be our vassal with low feudal obligations, low taxes, and low levy contributions to start out. Now, what do we need here? Minus 23. Let's see, though, if we can sway him. Sway him, Because if we could sway him and get the normal feudal obligations, that would mean he owes us... He's going to give us greater levies. He's going to give us greater tax contributions and basically help the empire more. Let's see if we can sway him here and get that. It might be worth it here. Now, the bigger problem that we have is Wessex. This guy, by the way, look at this. He just, he does not look good at all. His wife is looking at him like, dude, you need some acne medicine. What is wrong with him? He's got the great pox. Wow, this England is just being ravaged here by, by disease and sickness and stuff. Oof. Venere oh, he's got venereal plague all over his face. Oh, wow. This, he's, yeah, that's, no wonder his wife is ticked off. Does she have it? She does not have it. Okay, petty King Alfred, what have you been doing to get this? Anyway, that's, let's, let's skip that story for right now. Let's uh, let time go on here. Unless, can we attack here? Oh, we can. There's no longer a penalty. <sighs> yes. Oh, look at that. We can pick up another county here. He's only got 85 troops and we have over 6,000. That's, that's a, I think the odds are with us here. Um, I can't think of a good reason why we don't want to do this. Boom. Yes, we declared war. Now let's just ship, we're going to shift our rally point and just raise our men at arms because we don't want to raise everybody because he's only got so few amount of troops here. So let's get that sorted out and then we'll go to war again. Oh, look at this. In this Battle of Suffolk, we've taken the enemy banner. Excellent. This will make a fine addition to my collection. Yes, so we've taken the East Anglian War Banner in this battle right here. So this is an artifact that we've got. And my guess is this is going to go up on our courtyard walls. We could burn it for 75 prestige, but no, 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 no. We want to, we'll spend the prestige there. We've got a lot. And we're going to put it up. Let's go to our throne room here. And let's put it up on the walls. Court artifacts. So if we click here, East Anglian War Banner, it's going to give us 0 0.08 prestige a month, natural dread and court dread plus two. Every little bit helps when we have this such, basically a very basic courtyard right now. What's this over here? Oh, this is a petitioner. We're going to let him sit for a while. People will visit your lands and ask for different favors and create different problems. Now we've also captured his daughter. My daughter, oh, my daughter, Queen Ingrid, was captured by Yolrun and the Northmen army during the siege of Novgorod. This is our brilliant daughter who's strong and a genius. Um, wow, that's that's sad. Can we get her out? We can't pay the ransom. Wow, total minus 300. Too far away to interact with. Well, I'm sorry, daughter Ingrid. Queen Ingrid of Novgorod. She's had a great life, but she's a prisoner now. Hopefully they, she can get out. There's not much, despite the sadness in my heart, there's not much that we can do to help our daughter out. Anyway, we will let this uh, siege of Suffolk go forward. Nine months left. See if we can take this county, this Yeraldum here, and add it to our kingdom. That would take care of East Anglia pretty well here. It does look as well, just as an aside, the cold who flew here is subsiding, which would be very good. What? Oh, hey, we had a son. <laughs> Where did he come from? I knew, could we had it? Remember, our wife died, and then we picked up a new wife. I didn't know she was pregnant. We've been kind of busy with wars and stuff like that. Stuff happens, you know, it's easy to miss. Um, this is his name, Bolrol. Bolrol for. Okay, that's good. May you be grow strong and wise, my son. That's excellent. Hopefully he won't be a complete loser like our other son. Um, I didn't mean that really. I do love our other son here. From the, from the, finally, the plague has left. Yes, we can now emerge from the wreckage of the old world and the time has come to consider the new. We must spend spare no expense to rebuild. Yes, we will spend this money and start to rebuild. That's good. Okay, so we let's finish off East Anglia here. And let's see if we can start getting control of our realm and building it up and just lots of things that we need to do here. I'm going to move our um, marshal over here. Can you do that? Yeah, in countries can you? Because we have a... We've taken this county away from this Rodri to our west, but the control is very, very low. And because of the plague, I think we couldn't send him over there. So 
we will sort that out and get this going. But let's get back to our war here. So many things going on at once. I've also noticed up here, if we click on our brother now, um, he is minus 29, so he's liking us less and less. I'm not quite sure why, but that makes him less likely for vassalage by the day. I Oh, low legitimacy? Why is it low legitimacy? Oh, man. So he won't take the low feudal obligations. We probably should have jumped at that deal where we could have. Suffolk has fallen. Let's enforce the demands here. So be it. Disband our armies. We've got another county. Now, our um, domain here has increased to seven once we became king of England. So we will keep Suffolk for now and uh, see if we can get it under control here. You can see the control is zero because we've just conquered it. And if we look at our religious elements here, uh, Catholicism still reigns strong here. But in this county here, we've had our... Um, our chief priestess here trying to convert it and they have 59% converted. So we might get a Satru religion in Warwickshire here, which would get us started to uh, getting to other things. And then and in the culture here as well, it is all Anglo-Saxon, but we're getting Norse culture perhaps in this central county too. That long, slow process. I think we might do a split though, however, of culture, but we'll, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. We'll solve that problem as we move forward. For the moment, Oh, Jarl Guthfried was swayed here. So we swayed our brother a little bit. He's now at zero. Excellent. So let's see. Will he take low feudal vassalage? Oh, minus six. We just need to sway him a little bit more. We're still quite a ways away from normal. Hmm. If we could increase our legitimacy, that would help too. So lots of pathways forward here. Let's give it a little time. So our grandson's come back to us. He's in our court right now, and he's 19 years old, and he does not have a wife. So I've clicked on the Find Spouse button and pulled up here. And then I've clicked on the little uh, magnifying glass here, and I've we've selected Fertile, which comes up automatically. But then I've selected under Traits here on the left, Inheritable. And that will pull up the Inheritable characteristics. There isn't a ton of great stuff stuff available. I'd like to see someone like a genius or so, um, and ideally someone closer to his age. But for the moment, right now, we have this 28-year-old uh, who's got a really good stewardship rating um, and some pretty decent numbers in other places. Up here, too, as well, this uh, this uh, this one here, um, Alhildur has, because she concerns me a little bit, because if we look at her traits here, she's ambitious, arrogant, and sadistic. I feel like she could kill me. So let's take uh, Alfrior here, who is a little bit less evil. I mean, she is sadistic, but she's also trusting and friendly. She's sadistic in a very friendly way. I um, mean, she's got good stewardship too. So I feel like she's not going to mess with us as much. She's also a gardener. I mean, gardeners are pretty mellow people. So let's get our grandson married and get him on his way uh, to creating great grandchildren and ensure the the our line continues here. We also do now have our our prince who is just turned zero here. That really surprised me where he came from. But anyway, okay, uh, just kind of formulating a plan going forward. We're going to let our strength go. We're going to probably pick off some of these lands around us. It might be time to just kind of basically widen our realm a little bit to build up our military strength. I would love to get our nephew as our ally but it just doesn't quite work yet. We're six away, we swayed him once, so we're gonna have to keep trying to sway him and see if we can get him to be better friends. Maybe we should have a feast or something. I wonder if that would work. So if we had a, we have 175 gold, that's an expensive dinner. Wow, look at that, we only have 192, so let's hold off on that. I think we're gonna build up our lands a little bit and try to develop our economy and get things going here. So let's just let time run and kind of see what happens for a little bit here. So thinking on a little bit more, I don't think standing still plays to our benefit. I think we need to expand and grow. We have a very weak ruler down to our southwest here, and I th we can declare war on his entire duchy. He has no allies, and so let's do it, and then let's go uh, declare war here on Prince Highwell. See if we can call in our brother. Might as well. 
How much is that going to cost us? 150 fame, but we have oh, almost a thousand. So let's actually, that was probably silly, but we're going to uh, go to war here. We're going to raise all our armies and see if we can take this duchy here. So let's get this going. Of course, our brother shall help us. Excellent. Let's go start going right for the capital. Let's see if we can put the herd on them quickly siege this and take over the sons. That would give us another pretty hefty chunk here. I'm also eyeballing Ireland here. Munster is growing quite big. They are militarily, I think, stronger than us. And we also want to keep an eye here on Wessex, which is very powerful lands how to our assault. So, I mean, allied with our brother, we're doing pretty good, but we're not in the safest political position here. And there are lands that we can gobble up. I think we still need to be growing. Plus, eventually we need to get all of Britannia anyway, so we might as well just keep going. Prince Rodri might join the English conquest. Yeah, I know that's we're going to see what happens here. Hopefully we'll be OK. Our brother should help us. Oh, they ran away. That's fine. So we tried to siege their capital, but they came to siege our capital. It was going to take in longer. So if instead, we're going right after them in battle here. They called in their allies, which to their north of helping them out here. But we're going to continue to try to chop down their troops. We've got plus 50% with that military victory, and they are running away from us now. They're going to have to run far and fast to get away from us all here. We outnumber them two to one. We should be able to, we can just get them in the right place here. Cut them down. There we go. Excellent. So this shouldn't help them at all if we lose this battle. Still at 50%. That takes care of their military problems. Let's go back now and siege this, uh, siege their lands here and see if we can swing the battle finally in our favor. We captured, oh, we captured Lord Cavell. Excellent. We could probably ransom him for a good bit of change because we need some money. So I'm just taking a walk around our prison. We actually had a number of people in here we could ransom for some pretty good gold, but I also found this guy, Dumna Gual Glastening. He's 51 years old, but check it out. He is Herculean, prowess of 21. He's a Welsh Catholic, but we can demand his conversion to Asatru and then recruit him. And he can be a knight for us. Negotiate release. Come help us out. We got to get him married and see if he can have some kids too. Because those children could make good baby knights. So just checking out our relationship with our brother, Jarl Guthrith up here. It's up to plus 31. And he, I think we could he would be our vassal, but we're at war. So once we finish this war, if we can finish this war and get the, get this duchy, then maybe we can make him our vassal, which would increase our kingdom substantially here and give us enough power, really, perhaps to think on just kind of going directly to war against Wessex and finishing them off. Because really what I'd like to do is consolidate England, make it massive, right? And then up here is all fractured. Scotland is kind of broken up. We could go up and take care of Scotland. And then once we've got Scotland and England, we can come over here and wipe out Ireland. Wales, we're kind of getting that now. The problem is, if there is really a problem to be said, is that it's a 17th month siege of this strong fortress here. So it's going to take us 11 more months. Time's a, a ticking, but sometimes rulership takes patience, I guess. Oh, there it is. So our allies sieged one county, and that was enough to swing it to 100%. So we can claim this duchy here, enforce our demands, Enforce our demands. We've got it. Disband all. Perfect. Disband our armies. England has expanded now, sliding over here into Wales. This is outstanding. Now let's see if we can come up here. Your Jarl Guthrith, he's just, I think he's really impressed. I'm not sure why he likes us now as much. Brave. Oh, we've swayed him successfully twice now. So we've added 50 to the relationship to sway him to plus 32. So all this kind of socializing we've done with Jarl Gertrude has swung him to our favor. And now if we come to here and we go offer vassalage, he will not accept. Why? What's wrong with you? Low legitimacy. Minus 25. Base reluctance. Can we get him at low feudal obligations? Minus 4. We just need to increase our legitimacy a little bit more. Oh, so close. Or sway him once more. We'll keep swaying him, though. We can make better friends with them here. We are over our domain limit by quite a bit here with this, this land here. So we're going to have to carve these lands up and give them away. So let's take care of that problem. I'd like to see if we can get our brother as our vassal before we, uh, we call this chunk of our life complete. 
So we just got the opportunity to start a legend and this is the new DLC that I've not played with yet. But so I'm kind of figuring this out as we go along here. We have two options that have become available. Fame, the Sons of Lodbrook, Lothbrook, which I think is what we want to take. We click on this. Um, it says we cannot complete or abandon the legend for five years. This is us. 50% chance to gain access to the legendary statue option. In the clear grounds. Okay, that sounds pretty good. You gain 100 legitimacy. Increase the legitimacy level to rightful. I don't quite know what this means, but we will create it and see what happens. The Legend Chronicle, Sons of Lothbrook. King Bjorn of England was born from the pool of Ragnar's own flesh and blood. That is true, and it gives us some background information on this here. All right, we will complete this now, or we could increase the quality. I think we are going to try to complete it this way. We can't complete it for five years. 1886. Okay, that's... Oh, we have to wait five years to complete it. Okay. And I think if we had a court chronicler here, it looks like that we would be have a much greater chance of success. Uh, let's try this here. Okay, we'll bring her on to be uh, appointed to be our court chronicler. Let's see, and she's got things to do here. This is a whole search for legends, regular duties. That's fine. Let's see how this works as we go forward. Now, uh, we do want to let things slide forward a little here. That was a lot of money, but we're making pretty good income income here for the moment. And I think, does that help with our legitimacy at all? It does. Gives us plus 57 here for Jarl Guthrie, our nephew here. He won't accept at normal feudal obligations. He will accept at low feudal obligations. I think we can always increase these to later once we get more power. I would like to have him part of us rather than just sitting up to the north and kind of annoy, potentially kind of going. Again. I mean, I guess he could still rebel against us as a vassal. And he is got all of these traits here. But let's offer him vassalage and let him take it. That would solve this whole problem of the north part of England. And we wouldn't have to keep calling him as an ally here. Come on, nephew. I accept your gracious offer of vassalization, my liege. Yes, our nephew is ours. And look at this. England has grown in stature. Oh, as an aside, our daughter left the prison. Excellent. That's good. I like our daughter. Our niece was just taken prisoner, though. That's a problem. We can't have that. How much is the ransom? Can't, we can pay 13 and they'll accept it. Yeah, come on out. We're getting our niece out of the prison. And we're going to remember this up here. King Cossantin of Alba. Your, your days are numbered here. Coming for you next. So, But anyway, I think at this point in time, 15 years after Bjorn started with a small lands in Scandinavia and did the, the adventure to move to England here, he has now risen to the kingdom of king of England. He solved the problem of two of his brothers and his third brother, is he still dead? Where was he? He was... Yeah, this is our other brother, Jarl Sigurdur here. He is now... How old is he? 41 years old. He looks like he's in serious trouble here, too. He's a flagellant. He whips himself, and he's wounded, probably because he whips himself. That makes sense. He's not doing so well, either, here. Um, hasn't really risen much beyond his kind of humble beginnings. It looks like, actually, he struggled to... Uh, to really gain much more land. We uh, have moved forward. So two brothers dead. One brother still looks like he's gone a little bit backwards. We, however, have risen to the King of England. A lot of wood left to chop though here. Wessex, who is a different religion, is really not going to like us here. Their military strength is inferior to us. Oh, his wife did get, just saying, she got the, the great pox as well. So, the, yeah, there's, boy, they do not look like a happy couple at all. Wessex is really struggling here. They Could we offer vassalization to them here? Offer hostage. Offer vassal. There's no way they're going to take it. Yeah, minus 200 because they are of a different faith. So, that's a war to be fought, right? Wessex is the entire southern half of England here, and we will need it, as well as the other lands to the north and northwest here. 
Um, but a, a big step forward, I think, for Bjorn. He's become king, 55 years old, still in, uh, knock on wood, moderately good health here. He's got, what's this little red thing? Travel bad omens. That's not a big deal. Um, yeah, he's, he stayed in pretty good health. He's avoided the, uh, the, the plague for a while here. Um, done pretty well. Is his wife? Where's his wife? There we go. There's our wife. Got it. Okay, so we got two sons now. But we'll hold the kingdom together because we're just a king at this moment. So next steps will be to kind of cement our claims on England. Probably take care of Wessex. See if we can move over here to Wales. And then start eyeing Scotland and or Ireland. I'm not sure the order we want to do that in. Um, but there, there are some small pieces here that we can probably knock off. Like this little area up here, Northumbria. That is our nephew too. He's... Um, Will he be a... We could probably... Is he going to join us? Low feudal obligations. He'll take it. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Join us, nephew. Let's just let time run. Yes. A good deal. Hope that's a ransom offer. And yes. Vassalization. England has grown even further now. Most excellent. So we are, uh, we're on our way here. I'll put a link to the next episode. Now, as I'm creating this, the new DLC is out tomorrow. I'm going to start a new save as an adventurer with that. So look for a new series on the channel as that comes up. But I want to continue this and try to, to finish this as well. So we'll be back. The legend has started. The legend of King Bjorn. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.